Today, we're going to be talking about finding your gifts and figuring out how to share them. Beth Gordon and I are going to share that message about radiance. Well, I am introducing our musical guest today, Nina Gray, who is a California native. We're here with her in California today, and she is a singer, songwriter, producer, creative group facilitator using her gorgeous music and her multimedia works to honor the spirit of love in all of its forms. And we've heard her before and she's just amazing. I feel like there's nothing left to say other than welcome Nina. Oh, thank you, Beth. Thank you so much. Speakeasy community is always such a joy to join you and share music. In the spirit of the prayer, the gorgeous prayer we just received, um, this song is to honor that radiant essence that we are, the radiant essence of light that we are, of love that we are, of God that we are. And that question, what would love do? How would love respond to this scene? What would it say? What would it be? This song is called May I See Love. May I see love, may I see love, may I see love, 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 love. May I speak love, may I speak love, may I speak in love, 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 love. May I stay open. May I stay humble, may I stay true to what's so much bigger than me. May I show mercy, may I practice forgiveness for all of my friends, for all I could and could not be. May I see love, may I see love. May I see love, 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 love. May I speak love. May I speak love. May I speak love, 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 love. May my kindness not be taken for weakness. May my strength always be rooted in grace And may I see through all these masks that we're faking and may I see in a sense What's this? when I see your it's face speak easy. May I see love May I see love May I see love, 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 love. May I speak love. May I speak love. May I speak love, 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 love. Well, I know I may not always get it right. And I know I may not always see. I know, I know I'll always try Every day of this one and precious life May I see love May I see love May I see love, 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 love May I speak love, may I speak love, may I speak love, 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 and may I serve love, may I serve love, and may I serve love, 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 love. May I sing love, may I sing love, 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 love. Mm. So 
nice to get that real time applause, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Nina. We are so blessed to close out the year with you. We are just so in love with you. You are such a blessing to our community and to all the communities that you share your music with. We're just knowing nothing but limitlessness for you and your beautiful work in the world. So thank you. And um, that's going to kick off our talk today. And I'm going to move out a little bit and uh, enjoy. Today, we're talking about radiance, and we've covered a lot of territory in this Come to Mama series. Each letter of the word mother has been the theme for each talk. So we first started with Mia Sarah giving her amazing talk on miracles and how miracles happen in the love of Divine Mother, M. Then we had Reverend Elizabeth Keats giving her talk on openness. And she shared with us the process of the work from Byron Katie and how that radical openness to our most unenlightened self can shift our experience completely. So that's O. And then we had Reverend Celeste who gave us a talk on truth. And we were all taken to a deep place within T. And then we had the beautiful, amazing Nina Gray doing a talk on happiness. And also, not only did she do the talk, but she serenaded us with her gorgeous voice too, reminding us of the playfulness and happiness of childhood. And she welcomed us to all embrace that joyful, happy state in our daily round, H. And then last week, Mari gave her talk on empowerment. And she started her talk with that playful state, sharing about her childhood birthday crown, and then took us on a journey, inviting each of us to walk in our crowning glory of our divine power, E. And today, the last letter of Mother, R, Maureen and I are going to talk to you about radiance. So when I think of radiance, I think of the sun and how it radiates light and its warmth. And it feels so good to be in its presence. It's soothing and my body relaxes. But really, it's so much more than that. I mean, it is life giving. We would literally die without the sun. The whole planet, all the plants and animals, and subsequently all of us, depend on the alchemy of photosynthesis from the sun. As it hits the leaves on the trees and the plants and all of life on earth, we depend on it for our existence. So the radiance of the sun is synonymous with life itself. Now radiance can show up in other ways too. A lighthouse is another example of radiance. A powerful beam of light radiates out to the sea for all the ships to see. And it's a beacon providing safety and direction, especially in a storm or a fog. And it too is life-giving and life-saving. Now people can be lighthouses too. They can be lighthouses for others who are going through their own personal storms or their own personal fog. These human lighthouses with their radiance and light provide hope, guidance, a sense of safety and direction at challenging times in life. A sponsor in a 12-step program can be that lighthouse. A role model can be a beacon for anyone who is aspiring to their position. And a mother is a lighthouse for her child. And a father can be too. A lighthouse, a safe haven, a guide for safety and direction. Their very presence is life-giving and life-saving. Hmm. Well, now we can expand this idea of radiance even further, taking it to the next level. You know that person when they walk in the room and everyone turns their head and it's like, wow. 
when someone is radiant, everyone notices them. When they walk into the room or into any space, their very presence and essence has their energy extend out from their body and it fills the space they enter. These are the charismatics. Someone with such a compelling charm that they inspire devotion in others. It's a power or talent that is divinely conferred. And then we have stars. These are people that are famous or exceptionally talented performers whose presence shines so brightly that they are like the luminous points in the night sky that we call stars. We're drawn to these people. They nourish us on some level and we just want to be around them. And then expanding this idea of radiance even more. There is the divine light that comes with developing a powerful relationship with the infinite, with the divine. And some call this the Shekinah. The Shekinah is the English transliteration of a Hebrew word meaning dwelling or settling. And it denotes the dwelling or settling of the divine presence of God within someone. In Jewish and Christian theology, the glory of the divine presence or the Shekinah is conventionally represented mm -hmm. as light. So you see the sun and the Shekinah are really similar. And in Kabbalism, that Shekinah is actually considered the divine feminine aspect. So the Shekinah glory is the divine light that dwells within. Some have called it the Jewish Holy Spirit. So what does it have to do with us? Really, in a spiritual sense, it's the goal to have this presence reside within us in our heart, in our mind, and in our lifestyle. And so it's to invite this presence in, to let this Shekinah glory absolutely guide our life. And we all need the love and light that radiant beings offered. And we need each other to show up as our most radiant selves. This is how we nourish each other. Our presence nourishes each other. And just like the sun, we can't live on earth without it. We can't really live with each other unless we begin to access this divine, radiant light. And how do we access it? Well, it's really just about this relationship with the divine and the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Shekinah. Welcome the Holy Spirit and watch as you move beyond any perceived limitations into your greatest version of yourself and shine brightly and be radiant. And so Maureen is now going to share more on this divine light and the humble beginnings of the greatest of divine lights of all time. Well, before I tell the story about Jesus, I'm going to tell the story about Jerry, Beth's mom. <laughs> yeah, I love the idea that we are closing this series of Come to Mama with, uh, with Radiance. Uh, when Beth's mother, Jerry, left the planet this year. She... Um, she had read a book, Beth had read a book with her about energy. What a good daughter to sit with her mom as she's moving through the ending chapter. And she, she sat with her and she read this book about energy. And Jerry was such a fun personality that she decided that since she was just going to be energy when she passed through this, this state of being a body, that she told anybody who would listen that she would be hot pink. <laughs> and that would be the energy that she would be. So when 
I read about the definitions of radiance today, uh, I wasn't surprised to find a little bit of synchronicities because there's definitions of radiance say that it is the quality or state of being radiant. That one's pretty obvious. And radiance also means uh, the flux of density of radiant energy per unit uh, solid angles and per unit projected areas of radiant surface. That one's not so obvious. And then the third definition that I read is that radiance is a deep pink. <laughs> and I thought, oh, maybe Jerry had it right, that she was moving into her radiance. So as a poet, when I think of radiance, I think of this word of ray and dance and that we are the light as in a ray and that we are the dance as in the movement, that we are light in movement, that we are rays of light dancing through the ethers of eternity. And although it doesn't always feel that way, does it? Because this whole business of being human can feel so complicated and so cumbersome. <laughs> and yet we do have the potential of this pure brilliance and we will know that we have actually touched the hem of this truth when we find ourselves so well lit in this life and in this love. And Deepak Chopra says that the symptoms of recognizing that, you move in, that you're moving into enlightenment, and I'm so, I think it's funny that he calls them symptoms, um, are that you will stop worrying that things won't bother you anymore and that you will become lighthearted and full of joy, number one symptom. And that the second symptom is that you will encounter more and more meaningful coincidences in your life, more and more synchronicities, and that this accelerates to the point where you actually experience the miraculous. And I know that we are all catching a glimpse of that in our everyday life, to be well lit in life and laughter. So could we imagine ourselves being that brilliant? Marianne Williamson, who is our, one of our favorite teachers, she has that wonderful poem about our deepest fear and that our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. And I would take that even a step further because it's not a fear at all. In fact, for many of us, it's a fact. You know, we have convinced ourselves we are inadequate <laughs> and it will take an army of angels to convince us otherwise. So it's a good thing that at Speakeasy, we do have an army of angels. And that at Speakeasy, we remind ourselves and each other daily that we are pure brilliance, pure radiance. And how could we be inadequate when we are the very extension of God? We are the seeds of God. We are the ray of light. And as you grow, you grow into the potential of being the very sun itself. I once wrote this children's book about this little ray of light that becomes the sun. And I fully believe in that truth because we evolve into this radiance. So it makes me think of like when I was a little kid, maybe when you were a little kid, did you ever try on your father's shoes? Did you ever rummage through your mother's you know, closet and look at all of her dresses and try things on? Did you ever try and sit closer to your teenage older sister? And she was like, get out of here. <laughs> so maybe you had those experiences of like trying to pull yourself into adulthood and being in awe of adulthood and the way that adults did things. Now, here's the thing. You never feared being an adult because you knew that that would happen because everybody grew up. But as spiritual children of this divine father, we don't always allow ourselves to entertain the idea of maturing into our organic and limitless radiance. We hold off our own evolution of spiritual and Christ consciousness, so citing you know, reasons such as you know, enlightenment is for another lifetime or enlightenment is for saints or sages or who am I to be so glorious or who am I to be hot pink? <laughs> so, we're born to make manifest the glory of God. And this is the season where we get to entertain that light and that brilliance as we witness the trees light up, as we witness the holy candles glow, as we witness the connections with each other and the contemplations of our own gifts, as we write out these lists of things that light us up in hopes that some fat red man will bring us, deliver us these, these gadgets and gidgets, these things that bring us joy. And then we remember most of the time, wait, it's not about getting, it's about giving. And we go back to the list again, and we begin to write out the list we want to give to the world. And do we know our gifts? Do you know what lights you up? Do you know what you're here to deliver? Joseph is delivering his wife to Bethlehem, and Mary is delivering her child. And the three kings and the little drummer boy are delivering their gifts 
and Jesus is delivering a message of love. And I wonder what's ours to deliver. What are our gifts to bring? According to Angelus Arian, who's this amazing teacher and author of The Fourfold Way, she talks about these gifts of the archetypes and that the types are the visionary who lives within each of us. We are each visionaries. And the visionary is capable of telling the truth without shame. So that gift would be questioned if you were to say, are you somebody who is transparent in their truth? The gift of the warrior is somebody who shows up to be present. You might question, like, can I show up and hold space? Is that my gift? The gift of the healer is to pay attention to what has heart and meaning. Are you one who listens to the counseling of her own heart? And the final one is the teacher. And the teacher is someone who shares without attachment to outcome. That's a tricky one. So are we able to extend without conditions for the teacher? Are we able to share without conditions? These are gifts. The visionary, the warrior, the healer, the teacher. And within each of us, we can look for these examples to entertain our own radiance. So how does this light want to dance with me? In seven days, we're going to be celebrating uh, the birth of Christ, Christ consciousness. And at this very time in this story, Mary would be making her way to Bethlehem with Joseph. And this, I just imagine this beautiful young girl demonstrating so much faith. The angel visits her and tells her the news. And this child, basically, she says, let it be done unto me. Do we stand with her, with our hearts open, with our hands open, with our minds open and say, yes, I accept these gifts, these invitations, these initiations, they're mine. I don't have to fear them. I too have a part in playing uh, to play in the birth of Christ. I have a part and I have something to deliver. Or do we stand on the cusp of this invitation and begin to negotiate and negate our value and begin to bury our light under the sand? Let it be done unto me is what Mary invites us to say. Mary doesn't try and hide this gift, even though it's sort of hard to explain or to understand how she got pregnant, but how do you explain the miraculous? So she simply says, you know, she simply tells this truth without shame or blame. She tells this truth with enthusiasm, not just without shame or blame. She tells it with so much enthusiasm. This is the visionary to speak your truth with enthusiasm. You receive a vision, you simply accept it, and then you share it unapologetically. The visionary is the one who brings her voice or his voice to the vision, into the world, who refuses to edit, to sugarcoat, to water down, to hide or modify in any way, unapologetic, unharnessed, maybe a little wild. They're the brave ones who are, you know, courageous enough to live and lean into the yet to be. And they share this vision, even if it's unpopular, even if it's unbelievable. Think of the Wright brothers. You know, they were laughed at the idea when they got the vision for flight. Think of Harriet Tubman. She was scoffed at for the vision of freedom. But those who scoffed were left stymied. And hopefully you will leave your scoffers in your wake as well. Visions can seem like crazy town because nobody's done it before. They seem so, so, so far-fetched and living on the horizon. But the visionary moves with unflinching faith. And we can tap into that because all gifts are given to all children of God. So Mary shows us the skill when she goes without blame, without shame to Joseph and to her friend Elizabeth. And she says, I'm giving birth to the child of God. <laughs> and that's, that's audacious, man. The visionary has this gift of speaking the vision with so much faith that it's hard to even question them. The visionary is not working from form. They're working from consciousness. They're guided by a North Star, a higher hand. And so are we open to knowing and speaking a bigger, bolder truth about ourselves, even if it's unconventional? When Mary receives the vision, she says, okay, this is going to happen. Let it be done unto me. It may not make sense to the world. No, I don't care about making sense in the world. The world is senseless anyhow. I'm working in miracles. My advice to you is if you're sitting close to a visionary or if you are a visionary or if you're sitting close to one, you either get with them or get out of the way. <laughs> 
The next archetype is the warrior. And the warrior shows up in this story as Joseph. Joseph represents the warrior and not in a combative way, but in a, a way of being able to hold presence. When Mary comes to him and shares the news, he shows up. He doesn't promise anything. He doesn't make soliloquies. He doesn't make demands. He doesn't make accusations. He just simply shows up. What a very beautiful way to extend unconditional love. Have you ever experienced the feeling when someone just shows up for you? You know, or have you ever shown up for someone else? It's, it's nice, right? So the visionary is about the future and the warrior is about the present, about holding space in the present. If you have warrior energy, you're able to empower and inspire others, not necessarily with your words, but with your actions. I was sharing with Beth earlier that our friend America is a warrior. Like she shows up, she picks up bills. She like makes breakfast. Like you didn't say anything. She just like moves through it like a stealth ninja. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> it's like, man, that woman gets stuff done in so much grace and beauty. It's just like, and the warrior can go unappreciated because they're not the squeaky wheel. They're not the loud one like me. <laughs> so when a challenge presents itself, the warrior embraces them in the present moment. They don't fight. They don't flee. They don't fear. They don't freeze. They just get really present. What great energy and medicine for each of us. Joseph is a great example of this because he loves Mary and he holds the space for the delivery of her vision. And everyone here today has warrior energy because you showed up. You understood the value of your presence. You, your presence is a value. So the question is, where are the things that you're making yourself present to? When I began, Mir when I began Miracles Live 365, I remember thinking, I'm not going to be present for that. I'm not going to get up 365 days out of the year. But then I started to show up. And then I saw miracles. And then I thought, I get Christmas every day? Well, I wouldn't miss it for the world. And that's when I cultivated a greater warrior, a greater ability to show up to what had heart and meaning. What are some of the things that make you jump out of bed? What are the, some of the things that you feel pulled into showing up for a better and bigger version of yourself? Find that thing and chase it like it's the last bus out of hell. The next type is the healer. And the healer has the gift of paying attention to what has heart and meaning. And this would be represented by the kings and by the shepherds and the drummer boy. They all paid attention to signs and symbols and synchronicities and stars and what had heart and meaning for them. And that's how they ended up at the manger. The invitation to see a, the birth of Christ drew them in. And they didn't even know what they were up for or in for, but they just kept taking the next step. They kept following the next sign. Are you following your signs? Are you even asking for signs? Are you following your gut? Are you trusting your heart? As I continued to work with The Course of Miracles through Miracles Live 365, I came to see what had heart and meaning for me because getting to study with other people allowed me to witness the sunrise every day. And this fresh baked bread, this everyday Christmas, this is what I came for, you know? So healers shine a light on what is good and then they make it better. Healers make things better. So where are you making things better? And what are you making better? And where are you adding more value? And where are you playing your best for him, like the drummer boy. Our final archetype is the teacher. And the teacher is known for unconditional giving. When, when you teach something, it's almost the same as when you give something away. You can't put conditions on it. You can't put conditions on your giving. I can't teach you how to count. But then if you use the tool for counting your enemies instead of your blessings, I can't say no more counting for you. You've misused counting and now you have to give me counting back. <laughs> So it would be good if you could do that, but you can't. So as teachers, you have to let go. You know, if I teach A Course of Miracles, I can't demand that you embody the concepts. If I teach affirmative prayer, you, we can't demand that you get the fire in the belly. You kind of have to teach and let it go. You can't teach. You can teach, but you can't control. So we need to come open to outcome. Because have you ever noticed that when you think you're teaching something and then you think you're planting something and something else blooms and you go, wow, that was pretty cool. I'm glad that God continues to send me surprise parties. So 
Jesus is this master teacher, as Beth said earlier. And he's a master teacher because he totally gives his teaching to the world. And then we take it and we ignore it. We get it twisted. We get it all kinds of wrapped up. And he's still like, okay, I'm still going to teach the same thing to you knuckleheads. Someday you'll get it right. You know, it's pretty simple. You know, love your neighbor as yourself. Pray for your enemies. You know, and when we said to him, like, how did you get to be so smart? He was like, it's not even me. You know, there's a source within me that does the work. Like, that's how detached he was. He didn't teach about abstract truths that were, un, you know, a digestible. He worked in the practical. He had sandals on the ground. You know, he taught about truth that helped to give meaning to our lives. He taught about truth that we could use for ourselves to experience our own enlightenment and our own radiance. That's a good teacher. So we have the visionary teaching without shame, uh, telling the truth without shame, the warrior showing up to be present the healer paying attention to what has heart and meaning, the teacher sharing without attachment to outcome. We each have all of these things. This blessed young girl who dares to tell the whole truth lives within you. This noble Joseph who shows up to be present lives within you. This shepherd, this king, this drummer boy paying attention to what has heart and meaning, listening to your own internal songs and gifts that lives within you. And the Christ who teaches to love unconditionally, that is within you. We're making our way to Bethlehem, delivering our gifts to the world, capable of extraordinary radiance, each and every single one of us. We are the Christ. We're all meant to shine as children do. We're born to make manifest the glory of God that is within each of us, not in some of us, in everyone. And it's as we let our own light shine that we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. And our presence automatically liberates others. So this is you. This is me. This is Beth. This is Joni. This is Nina. This is us. You are brilliant. You are radiance. You are the light in motion. You are the Christ. You are capable of being hot pink. <laughs> so let's accept these gifts celebrate these gifts and share these gifts with the world. Merry Christmas. That's the word. That is the word. Thank you. Thank you for that hot pink word. This is a song called Starlight. <clears throat> Souls walking round in bodies Let's not forget We're all souls from other planets Stars feel just like they're far away Let's not forget All the promises we made When we return to this earth We'd have a hundred years or so We'd learn to breathe Learn to walk, then run, then love, then back to space we go. And now we're starting to remember. We're starlight, starlight, oh. We're dancing on the inside. Dancing on the inside Oh time, pillars of illusion Watch them burn In the fires of absolution Grace never hits our hearts the same Still love remains our compass Where we're lost in the night, floating through our space and time We hold on to our faith And limitless we radiate, oh God We're starting to remember Let's go. 
could rage, the sky could fall, but still we shine. Above it all, above it all, sea could rise, mountains crumble, the light inside us forever burns. Winds could rage, the sky could fall, and still we shine. Above it all, above it all, seas could rise, mountains crumble, the light inside us forever burns. Cause we give starlight, we're starlight. Whoa, we're dancing. that in my uh, Christmas stocking. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So radiance, like what did that bring up for you? Is there anybody here that was touched by the conversation? Has anything to share? We want to hear from you. Hmm. I, I know that just, you know, I didn't know that Maureen was going to talk about my mom. So I was like, <laughs> And, you know, I have told that story about being hot pink. My mom saying she, you know, when she's just energy, she's going to be hot pink. And, uh, you know, when I see hot pink, I think of her and, uh, yeah, but I did not know that that was a definition of radiance, pure pink. What? I know that's another synchronicity. So we must be lightening up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Was... Could we share the radiance of Mari for a minute before we go on to the rest of the conversation? Announcements. Oh. Yeah, sure. Good one, Joni. Thank you. Mari, what you got for us? Yes, good morning. Um, blessed Christmas week to everyone. Um, we are a non for profit spiritual community. So in the chat, you will see a link to our donations link. Um, your financial gifts uh, really help us to continue offering free classes, free events throughout the week. Not only that, it allows us to bring speakers and musicians uh, from all around the world as um, guests to our community and um we really invite you as end of the year comes to a close to really go within and see what is yours to give uh, and share with this community so we can continue offering all these events throughout the week. Um, no gift is too small, so see what is yours to, to share with us. Um, part of the, we have a full calendar and if you haven't checked it out, go to our um, website also, the link will be in the chat, speakeasyspiritualcommunity.com. And up above in the calendar, you will see everything that is happening. And that way you can stay connected and see what else is there that can really fill up your spiritual well. Pass it back. Gosh, love seeing you in front of the Christmas tree again. Like every time I see your face, I'm like, great talk last week. It was awesome. <laughs> well, look at her. She's radiant. I know. She's totally radiant. <laughs> With or without a tree, she's totally radiant. <laughs> Yes. There, Deb. Love that. I know better, so I do better. It's time. Yeah, man. Like, let's clear all of that, you know, congestion uh, before we move into the new year. Like, where are we withholding love? It's only withhold withheld from ourselves. So thank you so much for doing that. Carly wants to share. Thank you so much, Beth and Marlene, for sharing. Um <laughs> The story about Jerry, I went and put on my hot pink jacket. 
my mother exited before she had time to tell me how she would appear, but I'm sure Louise and Jerry um, are good friends. <laughs> and uh, I just thank you for the archetypes delineated in that story. I have never heard it quite that way. And as you spoke of each, Maureen, I could see myself, but I just love the visionary. And she gets to be unapologetic <laughs> about the vision. Like there's no, she sees it, she wants it, she gets to hop out of bed for it. And I think I've always um, felt like I have that. And then it feels like the whack-a-mole goes down. And I just really see the devotion of all of you as leaders and speakeasy. And just feel like, wow, you've landed in a place where it's fertile soil, where it's the soft place to land, where all of these women are doing it differently and really want to empower you if you are the visionary. So, but making it so much fun. And I do have to put a plug in for affirmative prayer. It's just changed my life completely. Uh, just completely, uh, yeah. And it, it's sort of like it solidified everything, that it was sort of right there. And then, uh, yeah, so anyone in this community who hasn't tasted of affirmative prayer, um, you have something waiting for you that is so spectacular. And for the first time, I see Christmas as an invitation, Maureen. I think it's always been this heavy thing or something I had to figure out. And this year, it's just this beautiful, beautiful invitation to uh, be, be the God and then bring it into I am all of that beauty and there, therefore so are you. Tell my love to everyone in this community. Amen. And I just want to witness you, Carly, because you are a visionary. You had the vision for Miracles Network, and you pour your love into that. Is that the name of it, Miracles Network? Miracles Tribe. Miracles Tribe. Okay, so you pour your love into that. You, you know, gather all the, you know, that's, that is the vision. That's the visionary energy. And you get to, everyone gets to look around their life. And say, where am I allowing myself to have effortless deliveries through my own vision? Because it's happening. You just sometimes we think, oh, their vision seems so much bigger or so much. It looks purple. So it must not be the same as mine. Is that You actually have this. So look into your life where you're doing this. And then what you focus on increases. So it gives you strength to recognize that, oh, I am the visionary. We're all visionaries of our own life. So it's important to know that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And I just want to add to thank you for your nod. Jerry and Louise are definitely getting to know each other and dancing together and hot pink mm -hmm. all the way. And my mom, Joan, is bossing them around. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks. Yeah, the birthday girl's here. Yay. And Martina. Hi. Martina's going to share first. Okay. Hi, um, so the effortless allowance, Maureen, you know, it's just, since I've come here, I'm here in LA and I'm so blessed myself and me are over from Ireland to be present. Mm. It's just beyond words, right? So as I've been watching you all and listening and experiencing your effortless sharing, your voicing Christ consciousness, your heart, your generosity, you're welcoming, you know, it's just so effortless. And the other morning, Maureen, I was saying to you, we were up very early and it was 5 a.m. and I was skipping around the house in my pajamas going, I haven't felt this since I was a child and I'd sneak down to see if Santa had left the gifts under the tree, right? And I was just like, oh my God, I'm feeling it, I feel it. And then it shut down and then you were singing, We Are Starlight. Mm -hmm. And I felt the cathartic shift because my heart was broken when you realize Santa is not real. And I started crying here and it was like, this is real. Mm. Wait, what? Is Santa's real. not real? This is real. This is real. This, what, you know, you're so in it, guys. The, the profound gift you are and the 
invitation you are to speak, to be allowed to speak, you know, and then I had the sense of what is the conditioning that has kept blocking me? And I felt myself in the church in the west of Ireland as a small child and you came in and you were silent and you knelt down and you listened to the male figure that delivered. And then only in later life were there female missionaries sometimes allowed to go up to, you know, give the, the communion. And then you'd hear in the community guys going, oh, look who's up on the altar and who does she think she is? And, mm. you know, so there's this, this oppressive conditioning to be silent, even be seen but not speak as a child. And you are the invitation in your allowance and your radiance mm. to open our hearts and share our gifts, guys. Mm. What a gift you are to the planet. And I'm so divinely grateful that Christ consciousness through this beautiful being mm. has brought me here. God bless you all, all hail. Mm. Precious, mm. precious, because it's it's real. That rhyme, it's like, oh my God, this is actually real. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. You know, Artina, it's your consciousness that brought you here. This consciousness is yes. always, it's your consciousness, it's our consciousness that brings us to everything. Nothing comes unbidden. So own that and honor that. Yeah. Oh, I don't really know how to follow that. Come here, here. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say happy birthday to Amy. <laughs> and I guess, Maureen, when you were speaking about the archetypes, um, the teacher one was such a relief for me. You know, when you spoke it, because I've been teaching for so long, but often have felt the weight of teaching as some sort of a responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just such a joy and I have been experiencing that the ability just to teach it and leave it let it go and whatever happens and whatever people do with it and um, but to hear it spoken uh, has just lightened my heart so much it's like oh yeah oh yeah just gotta let it go through me and that's mm -hmm. it and off it goes mm -hmm. off out into the ether and do what you may with it do what you want with it mm -hmm. <laughs> And yeah, so there's just such an ease in that and a grace in that and a, and a feeling of lightness in that. So thank you. Yeah. And there's a total, you have to let go of control and it's a total generous thing to do, but it's not easy because when you say to your kid, make your bed and he makes his bed and it looks terrible. Or your husband. <laughs> and you say, yeah, you're <laughs> You know, see, this is what it looks like and it doesn't look my way. Is it still perfect? And it really is allowing everyone you're around to run or crawl or, you know, walk backwards. However they get there is appropriate. And it's so, I mean, it really is. It, it relieves us from a lot of responsibility. Like you said, Mia, it should feel liberating. Ah, it should feel so liberating. And it's the opposite of the ego. This is my teaching. You know, this is my branding. This is my online course. You know what I mean? And you will get nowhere if you don't take it. You know, it's just bullshit. <laughs> all taken some of those courses and we're still exactly where we are you know so um, our teachers come in cup of coffees and in sunrises and in divorces and our teachers come when we're ready for them as they're supposed to come for our spiritual evolution and there's nothing to be feared about it but yeah generosity of spirit is it's, it goes a long way it's not easy but it goes a long way well, thank you for highlighting that beautiful um joni you have your hand up okay yes i do all right here we go um uh, <laughs> first of all i want to thank um will if anybody has a chance to read their newsletter you can really get another take on maureen's divine essence in a family and also if it's possible for nina to grace us with a birthday song for Mia and Amy's not on, but if we could all sing. Thank you everyone for showing up. And we're, uh, I would like to put a prayer in for, we do know people at this time who are struggling and who are alone in their holiday. And they have members of the family who are sick or incarcerated or addicted. 
And we just want to place them and all of us in prayer. And if there is someone in your uh, circumference that you know about, that you think I should reach out, now would be the time. So um, do you want to pray and pass and then we'll pass it to you? Okay. Yeah. So let's just take a moment here and go within and recognize this divine light, this divine love, ever present. So grateful to recognize the presence of peace, joy of wholeness and truth. And I recognize that we are all one in this divine light, this divine love, this peace, this joy. One in the living presence God is, divine mothers. It's from this place that I speak a word of blessing over anyone who is going through any struggle at this time. Just knowing right where they are, God is. They are sourced and supplied in every way that in the divine orchestration of life, some gift and blessing is occurring right in the middle of whatever the circumstance is. And so I call it forth and I claim it for each and every person here, for all of our beloveds, and allowing this prayer to ripple out further and further from our homes into our communities and out into the world as a gift and blessing. And I pass. I just give so much thanks for these words spoken for this container of our community for the love. And I, to add my word to this intention for the shifting of the holidays and all that it used to mean and all that it's going to mean and all that it means today, the way that we're connecting, the way that we're, spending time in solitude, just knowing that, that this, these are not conditions of Christmas. These are not conditions of Hanukkah. These are not conditions of holidays. These are just weather that's only passing and that we get to anchor down every day and experience this light, that this beautiful light is steadfast, that it's ever available. Whether we are around our family members or we feel isolated, there is a light within us that cannot fail. And I know that that light brings us to the solitude that gives us inspirations for creativity and for clarity and for focus as we navigate this ending of a year and the beginning of a new year. Or if we're surrounded by many people, that this is an opportunity for us to have greater patience, have greater compassion, have greater generosity. So I know that no matter where we're at, it is the perfect place for us to be and that we are gifted by the experience. There's a gift there and a blessing there for each and every single one of us. So I give thanks for the ability to see the gift and then to be the gift. For this and so much more, I give thanks. And I surrender these intentions into the beautiful energy of divine love that always says yes and yes and yes. And so we let it be and I and so it is i pass this to nina amen amen this is a beautiful birthday song Mm -hmm. from the birthday goddess happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday Happy birthday, Mia. It's my first crown ever. (laughs) Not the last. Is it straight? (laughs) (laughs) What can I control? What can I release? What can I let go? <clears throat> Do I really need? Cause I've been running in circles. I'm 
ready to break free is the way it's always been ain't how it's gonna be no 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 i paint new pictures and i just in my speed I'm finding more reasons To be grateful For this life I lead I'm singing new songs And I'm planting new seeds Yeah, no longer blocking All these blessings, manifesting Let them rain down on me Hey, you know this life is long And it's so short At the same time and before I'm dead and gone, I made a promise, God, I'm gonna let this light shine, light shine, light shine. Oh, na 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 na. Oh, na 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 na. Oh, na 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 na. Oh, na 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 na. Oh, na 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 na. So if y'all know this song, if you know this song, please sing with me. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Let it shine, let it shine.